No, we'll never be what we were before. To me, the spirit of Deep Purple lives on. If we're not a trend band, we're not uh, an in-band, we're not a hip band. We're just a working band. When we were considering a reunion in 84, for many years I'd been against it. For those very reasons. That, in fact, Deep Purple had become the name had become bigger than the five people in it. The legend had grown, and it was nothing to do with us. We were just five musicians that made some music. Smoke in the Water was nothing more than an album track when we made it. Uh, it became something else, right? it, 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 out of our control. Do you dislike that development a little bit? <clears throat> no, I mean, it's a natural way of things. But um, I did think that, that Deep Purple may be a product of the 60s and 70s and that it should be left that way, that now we should move on and do other things. Um, and I felt very strongly about that. <laughs> Myself, and I see artists, and their first stuff is great. I mean, Little Richard, when he first came out, was fantastic. I loved him. He was the biggest thing for me. And later on, you know, 10 or 15 years after, when he started trying to make rock and roll again, he wasn't the same. You know, and he's not the same. He's changed. He's different. You know? And you can't ever recapture your youth. Why, why don't you make uh, any huge hits anymore? I mean, like Smoke in the Water or Highway Storm? Because we never made them in the first place. The public made them. Some called Strange Kind of... As I look back at videos and listen to recordings, bootleg recordings of the band on stage in those days, there was, um, it was, we were still coming out of what was called an underground music. Hard rock music was not accepted, it was not a regular thing. It was uh, very rare to find it. There were very few bands doing it and very few bands being successful at it. Um, and because we were coming out of uh, this progressive thing, as I look back on them, actually, I look back with a great deal of humor because there we are on stage ignoring the audience. It was very much a case of um, the music. It was all important and it was, we were seriously into the music, you know. At the end of the song when the audience, oh, there's an audience there. You know, <laughs> And then in between songs, we'd have a cup of tea, light a cigarette, have to talk about the weather. What song should we do next? Oh, I don't know, let's do uh, Charlie in Time, okay. Right. It was and, more of a jam session, session at that. It was, it was much liver, much more of a, a jam session, as you say. Um, <clears throat> a lot more freedom. I didn't want to be an anachronism, and I didn't want to be in a band that relied on the past. However, when we finally got together and had a meeting about it, the first thing we decided to do was to see if we had any music in us. And so we did that. We got together in a small basement with some amps and stuff and we started playing and that changed my mind because it felt great. And for me to then say, oh, well, I don't want to do this because it you know, belongs to the past, that's, that would be wrong. Mm. It felt like I was back in the family again. It felt like we were very naturally uh, playing together. It felt the chemistry was good. And so from that point on, I thought, well, I'm not going to worry about the past. The past is something you have to live with and I'm very proud of it, but it doesn't rule my life. Now for other people who, whose life it does rule, who say, oh, Deep Purple were great then, but they're not so great anymore, uh, I can only feel sorry for them because, you know, it's not my problem. Of course, in the last 20 years, hard rock has become the establishment music. What do you think of the nowadays hard rock? Like, it's the development of it. Uh Crash metal, speed metal, heavy metal, everything. <clears throat> What's your personal view on it? Hmm. Um, there's always good musicians around. Um, in general, I don't like much of what heavy metal has to offer. And to me, it's not music, it's image. Image. Yeah, it's like you can get any four or five musicians and teach them to play a few chords, as long as one of them can scream and the other one can wail away as fast as he can on guitar. And you've almost got it made, you know. Uh, to me, that's not music. That's, and what you wear is important, and the way you have your photographs taken, everyone has to go, uh, and all this business, you know. It's, but um, most of the people who are in bands today and play this kind of music, you are, and Deep Purple is a foreground for them. Mm. You still are. But you know what? <clears throat> in the early days, we um, 
went out of our way to be as natural as possible. I remember distinctly having rehearsals um, and a cameraman was going to come out. And this was in 1969. And he said, OK, I want you all to line up there and smile. You know, and we said, no, we're not doing that. You know, we're not going to do anything we wouldn't normally do. So this is how we are. Take it or leave it. There's a lot of people, people who are great to Cripple fans. There is a big question mark about the Cripple, what happened to the lead singer. Listening to the Purple nowadays is like coming home and finding your wife making love to another man, and she doesn't even enjoy it. What's your comment on that statement? Didn't Ian Gillen say that? He said that. Yes, he said that to me. Uh -huh. Um, I fully understand what he's talking about. When I'm, uh, in 1973, when I left Deep Purple, <clears throat> I was very, uh, it wasn't a good time for me, it was a bad time for me. I didn't leave because I wanted to leave, I was leave, I left because I was asked to leave. Um, and the, the, the next album they did, which was Burn, I couldn't listen to it. I couldn't judge it in any way that was objective. I hated it because of what it represented. And Ian was asked to leave and I'm certain he has the same, exactly the same feeling as I did then. And Why I, did you I, ask him to leave? I sympathize with him because I know what he's going through and he's, he's a good friend of mine and he's still a good friend of mine. I mean we've actually come through this and still remain friends. In fact I think we're probably better friends now than ever. It's, it's gone deeper in a way. Yeah, it has. Because it's uh, shared pain. General feeling that the chemistry of the band was wasn't working right. House of Blue Light was a very difficult album to make. The ideas didn't flow. It was not a, a good time. Um, when we got back to rehearsals and writing for the the next album, which would have been Slaves and Masters, um, the songs weren't coming at all. There was a, there seemed to be a, a a barrier between Ian and the rest of us. Um, not on a personal level, but on a musical level. It, he wasn't singing the way everyone else felt it should go. And there seemed to be a, a problem. And the only reason to be in a band, really, is to have, have fun at doing it. I mean, there's no point in doing it and, when you're not enjoying it. And it, was, it had become not enjoyable. ever compare singers. I would never compare Ian Gillen and Joe and Turner. The band's happy. The, the band is, the music is flowing much, much more. In fact, I was against Joe being in the band initially, before he sang with the band, simply because I could see Everyone's saying, oh, yeah, Deep Purple's turning into Rainbow, you know, Deep Rainbow. I could see the headlines. <laughs> and, um, but really, uh, when, he, when he sang with the band, he was the only singer that really, really sparked the band and created that chemistry that you can't define. Lately. 
every time. Why do you wear a hat? I've always wore a hat. Yeah? I wore a hat in purple originally. Yeah. Because every time I went on stage, after about one song, I looked like I just got out of the shower. And when I saw photographs, <laughs> I didn't like the look. So, so I you're decided... Not, you're not bald head? I'm losing hair now, yeah. But I wasn't then. And uh, the fact that I always wore a hat, you know, it's just one of those decisions you make. And I made this decision 20 years ago. I'm going to be a hat person. I have this vision of myself at uh, 79 years of age. 83 or something, <laughs> still making hard rock music. <laughs>